welcome back to the series on uh, Image Data Converter, SR, that's Sony's Image Data Converter. Um, it is the tool that uh, converts the RAW files into, uh, into uh, JPEGs or TIFs. Uh, this is version 3.14. Uh, we covered the toolbar in the last, in the, uh, last session, docking and undocking windows, um, the iconic view down here, and um, also what we covered is brightness, uh, white balance, uh, creative style. We left it off at creative style. Um, the next control, or the next, um, you know, tool is contrast. That uh, is between the lights and the contrast between the lights and the dark part of the image. Uh, basically, it's like contrast and anything else. Uh, plus increases the contrast and minus decreases the contrast. And um, you hit the reset button and it takes it back to basically a shot. <coughs> contrast is contrast. Uh, the next uh, tool is called D-Range Optimizer, Dynamic Range Optimizer. Uh, this is a little bit different. In the uh, camera, you can, uh, depending on which camera you're using, this was uh, shot with an A850, um, you've got several levels of uh, dynamic range optimization, depending upon the camera used. <coughs> Here you've only got basically off, auto, which is like a DRO advanced, uh, or manual. Now in manual, I can uh, indicate the type of dynamic range enhancement that I wish to apply. And then also what I can say here is how much do I want to uh, increase my dynamic range in my highlights or in my shadows. If I drop this back, it will tone down uh, my highlights. Okay. And if I bring this up, it will bring up my shadows. Okay. You're seeing it updating now. But uh, what it can do is either apply to, you can, you can have separate adjustments. Amount is the total amount of DRO. And the highlight and the shadow sliders control the highlights and the adjustment, or the highlights and the shadows separately. Excuse me, I've got something in my throat. <coughs> okay. So that is D-Range Optimizer. And again... Uh, what you can do is you can hit reset and take it back to as shot. Uh, highlight uh, color distortion reduction is another uh, control that um, basically is uh, pretty advanced. Um, there's not a lot to it. If you click on advanced, it will uh, basically correct, um, correct to a greater degree your color uh, uh, distortion in your highlights in standard to a lesser degree. Okay, in your color tab, uh, you can individually control uh, the hue and the sat or the hue and the saturation. If you notice, if I take this over in this direction, uh, what it does is uh, it goes towards the magenta side. In this direction, it goes towards the green side, and um, I can also do a reset. Saturation, quite simply, is saturation. Here, uh, you can add saturation to your image, or you can subtract saturation from your image, or reset it. Uh, peripheral um, illumination uh, is basically if you get uh, vignetting on a lens, uh, you can control, which we don't have any here, uh, but you can control the uh, the 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 size of the non-vignetted part. Uh, and you, with these sliders, uh, what you can do is uh, do a great deal to suppress or eliminate your vignetting. Uh, you can control the central strength or the peripheral strength and the central radius. Okay, sharpness is one that took a little bit of work to find out everything operated. <coughs> the amount of sharpness controls your overall sharpness in your image or your difference between uh, the light areas and the dark areas. Uh, threshold 
is the amount of uh, difference between the light and the dark areas um, you know for the amount to apply to uh, if that doesn't make sense think about it for a minute the overshoot uh, controls the amount of sharpness that applies to the light area and the undershoot applies to the amount of uh, lightness that um, occurs to the uh, dark area I mean the amount of sharpness that occurs to the dark area is undershoot and overshoot is the amount of sharpness that occurs to the uh, light area okay noise reduction um, is pretty sophisticated uh, what you can do is you can have auto noise reduction or you can kick it into manual what you can basically do is control the amount of um, noise reduction that occurs and selectively uh, increase or decrease uh, the amount of that um, noise reduction in um, the color noise reduction or the edge noise reduction very powerful control okay uh, tone curve is probably the most powerful of all uh, what you can do we'll undock this is basically uh, you can either control the brightness the red green or blue channel individually and if you'll notice all channels are represented I use um, the tone curve uh, really instead of my contrast and um, uh, my brightness control because well, it's far more uh, far more uh, powerful than either one is um, uh, alone uh, what you can do is uh, you can increase your highlights and uh, decrease your shadows a little bit too much just want that gentle S curve in which gives you that uh, uh, non-linear relationship between your uh, um, you know your shadows and your highlights uh, also um, if you have basically a new space in your um, uh, histogram what you can do is you can come over to here grab this control and oops I don't want to grab the whole window here but you can grab this control and move it over slightly uh, in either direction which basically uh, will take care of the end use portion of your histogram um, it looks like this one is going to be a three uh, part video so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, stop here this is the end of part two and we're going to pick it up in part three please uh, visit my site that's www.photolink that's f-o-t-o-l-i-n-q dot com for more training videos and a lot more about Sony um, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on part three